in the midst of the darkest night Let your love be the shining light oh, Breaking chains that will hold me You sent your son down to set me free oh, Everything in this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face And I will live that your will be done and I won't stop till your kingdom come Hey now, cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, we lift you higher You love, you love, you love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are alive in us Nothing can take your Energy. We come alive, we come. Hey, say we come 
We come alive, we come alive, say. Come alive in the river. Hallelujah. We come alive in the river. Come on, sing it out. Say, we come alive in the river. Some of you need to declare it this morning. Go ahead and speak it over that situation. We come alive. Go ahead and speak it over that child has lost his way. Go ahead and speak it over that depression that keeps trying to creep back in. I come alive, I come alive, say. Last time, last time, we come alive. Oh, we come alive in the river. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Don't stop praising him. Let's keep it going. For you are beautiful, God. You are beautiful, God. If he's done anything for you, you ought to lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Because you're here today. You still have breath. You still have purpose. He is powerful in all of his doings. Hallelujah. 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 Keep worshiping him. Sing out to him. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. You are the word at the sing that it's a sweet sound
God told me to come in here and prophesy to somebody who had a bad last chapter in your life. He said to tell you it's not over. 
It's not over. Your story is bigger than one bad chapter. And the best is yet to come. I want to stop right here and say something. Never judge a person on the bad chapter you walked in on. My last chapter might have been long and sad. But don't try to finish my story based on one ch chapter. If you looked at Joseph in the pit or Daniel in the lion's den or Jonah in the belly of the whale or the three Hebrew children in a fiery furnace, you may have thought their story ended there. But that was just a bad chapter in their lives. Is somebody in this room glad that your story is bigger than your last chapter? That God hasn't given up on you, baby. Hallelujah. Guys, your best chapter is about ready to start. There have been prophetic words winding down last year, 2017. The voice of prophecy has spoken here at Church of the Harvest. Your best days are the rest of your days. How many believe it? If you believe that, lift your hands toward heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Guys, we are so excited. This is our first service back in 2018. The last time we saw all your beautiful faces was on New Year's Eve. We jumped on the plane, as you saw, went to uh, Frankfurt, Germany. We sat there for six hours en route to Abuja, Nigeria. Guys, we came back changed. Your pastors are changed after that, after that trip. I don't know why I thought this, but I thought Nigeria was a third world nation. But I'm, I'm telling you something, they got more swag than all of us here in the U.S., man. There's a vibe over in Nigeria. There's a sound that comes from the, from the, the, the uh, there's a rhythm. And I can't even put my, I can't even, I gotta speak in Hebrew. I can't even put it in English, the, the vibe that I felt, the sound that I felt, the, the, the embracing of God's spirit, the way he, the way he honored us, and the way, the way their love, the Nigerian people's love enveloped us. We, we heard them, say, we saw the tops of their heads 1,500 times. We honor you, sir. We honor you, madam. And there was such an honor um, in the Nigerian people. You saw the way they escorted us in, in limousines every place that we went. There was a guy with a machine gun sitting in the front seat, and they, 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 the security was absolutely phenomenal. We went to the church. There's 5,000 people in the church, packed out. Every time the pastor stood up, all the elders and all the security people, they all stood up. Pastor sits down. They all sat. There was, there was an honor and respect in that place that I've seen on this planet. And it made me think about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When we come into his magnificent present, when we come into his, his uh, marvelous light, the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, chain-breaking power, prison doors opening. But how many times do we sing that song, break every chain, or open prison doors and set the captives free? How many of us really believe that God is, it can and will do it right here, right now? The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I was talking to Pastor Byron, uh, Fatty Inbo, and he said that what, is, what the average American has the average Nigerian calls it a miracle. And the hunger in the people of Nigeria is, is, is so amazing to me because, you know, it's either black or white. It's either true or it's not. The Word of God is either real or it's not. And in this country, we water things down because we live in the land of abundance. We have running water. We, and we have paved roads. And we don't drive our cars and, you know, fall into potholes every place that we go and, and have the crime like they experience. Every, every time they step out their doors, they could get shot out on the streets by, by terrorists there. And they, they walk in faith. The just, the just shall live by faith. And knowing that God will never leave us or he'll never forsake us. But how often is it do we walk out those doors and we go to our respective jobs or we go down to the supermarket and we know that God is, 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 is there hand in hand with us every place that we go. I learned a lot from the Nigerian people this past two weeks. Pastor Kim and my life has forever changed. And what we saw, the humility and the honor that they had for us, 
how much more so should we honor and be humble before God? The Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives, he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt you. Too many of us want to be up here and seen and heard and, and look how pretty I sing or look how great I preach or look how, uh, look how nice I look when really our, our flesh is as filthy rags. The elders cast their crowns before him and they bowed down and they said, holy, holy, holy is your name. And guys, if we'll get a hold of God's magnificent, awesome power, that he could change you like this in the twinkling of an eye. But we don't want to get down here. Jesus said, would you pray? He said, pray like this. He said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And there's too many of us hotshot preachers, you know, like, look at me. And they want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want a new record deal. They want to be famous. They want to be on social media. They want everybody to bow down and worship them. And Jesus said, that's the guy that I resist. But I give grace to the humble. We hate our brother sitting next to him, next to us because he's black. We hate our sister sitting next to us because she's white. We, we hate the one that's, that's prettier, taller, more educated because they got what we don't, or what, what we want. If we would just stop and just look at him and say, God, not my will. All I want is you and your will in this house, even as it is in heaven. And this church was excellent. They lavished us with gifts. They, 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 they treated us like, like kings and priests. But yet they were, the average person there was in lack and trusted God with all their heart, with all their strength, with all their soul, and with all their might. And there's miracles sweeping through that place. Miracles sweeping through that place. And I'll tell you, the Nigerians, they got some swag, y'all. Their worship team was amazing. Anyway, we're changed. This year, we're going to lay our lives down before God. We're going to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand so that he can exalt every, each and every one of you in this place. Because as you cast all your cares upon him, he cares for you. He cares about your finances. He cares about your, your future spouse. He cares about every jot and tittle about you, your children, your family, or your future family. He knows the beginning from the end. And all he's asking you is to love him with all your heart. That's what we're going to do this year. We're going to love God with reckless abandon. We're going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things that you desire will be added to you. If you to this morning will make a decision to delight yourself in the Lord, he said he will give you the desires of your heart. He will. He will. He, he didn't say, I'm going to think about it. Um, let me go and pray about it. No, he said if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. You believe it? Yeah. Amen. Guys, this morning, I'm going to receive our morning offering here, and I'm going to hand the microphone over to Pastor Kim, and she's got a word today, OMG. Everything that you do in your life in the natural has a spiritual implication to it. Did you know that? The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6, 7, don't be deceived. Now, he's talking to the church of Galatia, Christians, and he said, don't be deceived. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Mark? Christians can't be deceived, can they? Oh, yeah. He said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. He said, for whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Whatever you sow in this world is what you're going to reap. You sow love to each, sow love to each other, you get love back. If you reach out and you hug on somebody, look, she's hugging me back. If you go up to somebody, you push them, they're going to push you back. If you sow hate towards somebody, they're going to hate you back. If you sow finances into God's kingdom, you're going to reap finances back. I mean, it's a principle of seed time and harvest. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground, it dies and abides alone. Who's the kernel of wheat the Scripture is talking about? Jesus. 
He's the bread from heaven. Unless the kernel of the wheat falls into the ground and dies, goes into the grave and dies, it abides alone. But if he dies, he brings forth much fruit. Everybody sitting within the sound of my voice in this auditorium or over live stream, you are tuned in to this broadcast or sitting in this auditorium this morning because of the kernel of wheat that gave his life as a ransom for you. Here's the fruit right here. Whatever you sow, whatever man sows is what he'll also reap. Here's the spiritual implication of your finances. You could write out a check, or you could drop cash into one of these offering baskets right here. And it may just be a, a, a check, or it may be cash in an envelope in a wicker um, offering basket. But really, there's a spiritual implication that you're sowing into the fertile soil of the kingdom of heaven. Let that soak in for a second. It's not that 20 or that 100 or that 1,000 or that 10,000 or whatever you put in that basket. It's not about the amount. It's about the amount of faith that you have trusting God. There was a woman that sowed two mites, which is two little copper coins, probably two, two, cent, two cents. They're probably worth a fraction of a cent. And there was a rich man that sowed thousands of dollars at the same time. And Jesus marveled at the widow that gave everything she had while the rich man just gave out of his abundance she gave out of her lack, and he blessed her. Guys, if you're struggling in your finances today, trust God this year. Man, I, my heart breaks every single day when I counsel people back there in the office and that I hear the same thing all the time. I can't afford to tithe. But the reality is, is we can't afford not to tithe. Because unless we put our finances in God's hand, he, we want God to bless every aspect of our lives except for our money. Well, we want them to bless our money, but we don't want to do what it takes to see the blessing on our finances. Because remember, whatsoever a man sows, if I'm not sowing my finances, I'm saying, God, I don't trust you at your word. 10% already belongs to you. And then the offering is 11% and above. But we really don't trust God in our finances, do we? Because we say, well, I got my car payment, I got my rent, I got a I got to go to the club on Saturday night. I got a $250 worth of food to eat this week. Uh, and then we start making our checklist. And then at the end of it, we push God completely out of our lives and our finances. And we struggle week after week, month after month, and year after year. Guys, trust God in his word today. When you sow your money in here, I don't, I don't use that money to go out and buy a new jumpsuit. Or go out and buy a new car or a bigger house. We don't touch God's money. Yes, I receive a paycheck. Pastor Kim does not. She, her, her, her finances come through her travel ministry. But we don't get funny with God's money in this house. Amen. Your funds go into the, into the bank account, and God tells us we're, we're allocated. Amen. Because he wants the blessing on you. Guys, give to him in faith today. Give him the most generous gift that you've ever done. Let's start this year off with a bang. Amen. We don't want your money. God doesn't need your money. God wants your heart. And where your heart is, your treasure will be also. Amen. Praise God. You guys ready to give? There's five ways to give this morning. If you're giving by cash, raise your hand. We've got ushers up here to give you an offering envelope. Guys, fill out that offering envelope in its entirety because we want to be able to give you a receipt at the end of the year. Everything you sow into this house is 100% tax deductible. Amen. Tax write-off. If you give $100,000 this year, you can write it all off. Amen. Or if you give $100, you can write it all off. Praise God. If you're giving by check, write your checks out to C-O-T-H-F. Stands for Church of the Harvest Fayetteville. If you're watching online this morning, if you're watching full screen, minimize your screen. There's a give link right there in the center of the screen, and it'll walk you through the prompts how to set up an account. It takes about 15 to 30 seconds to do it. Also, text to give by dialing number on the screen from your smartphone, 770-574-6844. That's 770-574-6844. Just put the amount you'd like to give in the message line, and it's as simple as that. If you've never done text to give before, there's a small account you got to set up for that as well. You have to do that one time only. Amen. And last but not least, we have two kiosks at the back of the auditorium. Jocelyn, wave, wave your hand back there. That pretty girl back there in the red shirt where it says, ask me. If you need help, just ask her. Amen. Praise God. You guys ready to give? You guys can come forward.
Guys, if you're still giving it uh, on the kiosk back there, just feel free to, to do this. I'd like for every one of you to stand to your feet and lift your hands toward heaven and give Jesus the biggest love offering and praise that you can. Just tell him, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what you're about ready to do in my life this year. Amen. I boldly declare that unmerited favor is coming to you. Amen. Amen. Your finances are, are blessed. Your health is blessed. Your family is blessed. Your ministry is yeah, blessed. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, are the yeah, head yeah, and not yeah, the yeah. tail. You are above only and not beneath. Praise God. God is going to open doors that no man can close. He's going to close some doors no man can open. He is going to erase some relationships from your life this year. And he's going to bring in some relationships that are going to bless you this year. That will cause you to go higher. Amen. God has got a plan for you. Amen. Praise God. Now with that said, if you guys will all welcome my awesome, my but not only my good gift, but my perfect gift from heaven, my wife, my sweetheart, Pastor Kim. Uh, what is going on? Man! Did y'all miss me like I missed you? What? It feels like it's been forever. Man, we miss y'all. I think we do have the greatest church in Georgia. Faux shizzle, okay? So we're so glad you're here. We're so thankful. Thank Coach Stormy. It's so nice to have you and your awesome friends and all of you other incredible visitors that I haven't gotten to hug yet, but I can't wait to. I believe that hugs heal. And so I'm going to, don't, don't come near me if you don't like to be hugged because I am going to hug the hell out of you, okay? I'm going I'm to like hug y'all so tight. You're going to walk out of here and feel like, wow, I was at a meeting one time and I hugged somebody and I heard some bones crack and I went oh because I'm very hyper all right I got a lot of hyperness in me and I just held her like oh my god I'm about to get sued and she said that she had back surgery and her back was messed up when I hugged her he went back into place I was like won't it do it so we gonna hug on you today you can be seated. We had a great time in Nigeria. You know, God is really awesome because forever I've been invited all over the place. Thank you, praise team. Y'all rock. Thank you, Dob. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you to our incredible praise team and all of our volunteers. We love you. Um, and thank you for all y'all do in this house. We couldn't do it without you at all. But uh, when we were in Nigeria, I just started laying there thinking about, God, how did this happen? You know, because you go through seasons where you feel like people dropped you. You ever been to those seasons where you feel like people just absolutely dropped you? And if you don't have your back, ain't nobody going to have your back. You ever been there? Kind of like you just feel like you're out there beating the pavement and other people just get things handed to them. And they all looking at you like you got this special treatment. And they don't know how hard you've been working. They don't know how hard you've been crying, praying, getting up when you wanted to give up. You know what I'm talking about? Like I'll ne I'll, every day of my life, people come on the scene and they're like, girl, where did you come from? It's like like you just and there you were I'm like girl it was 10 years it was not overnight okay this is why you can't compare yourself to people because you don't know the hell some of y'all couldn't handle what people have gone through to get the anointing on their life you see what I'm saying like people weren't just handed it's because you didn't give up when you wanted to give up, but you got back up again. And when nobody else was speaking to you, you knew how to look in that mirror and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know how to lay hands on yourself. You don't need pastor to lay hands on you. Because there ain't nothing like walking through hell and coming out on fire, okay? You can't go to seminary to get what God's doing in your life in this season. He is preparing you for such a time as this. It's like every time, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you stay in storms longer than you need to be in there because you ain't got the courage to get up. You over there waiting for something to happen your way. If I get a husband, then I'll serve him. If I, my wife stays home, then I'll praise him. If, if I get this, 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 this promotion at work, I'll praise him. You mad at God because you didn't get that one-bedroom house, and God's over here saying, I'm trying to give you a five-bedroom house, and if I give you the one-bedroom house, then you're going to be locked in a lease, and you won't be able to take the blessing I'm trying. See, we allow ourselves to get stuck in a season and let it define us. When God is saying, I got you. I got you, boo. 
I, I love this song that I've been singing in my spirit over and over and over again. It says, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Some of y'all need to learn how to just praise your way out of some stuff. Some of you need to learn how. You're like, well, Kim, I can't sing. Well, honey, neither can I at the time. But I sing like I know I can sing. In the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you. I don't know how you're going to do it, God, but way maker, miracle worker. I can't pay my bills, but I don't know, God, but I know that you ain't leaving me here. The world gave up on me, but God, you ain't forgot about me. Because as long as you got a pulse, I got a plan. Waymaker, miracle worker. Come on. I'm going to tell you something. When you learn how to get yourself unstuck, coming to church, allowing yourself to be offended, getting on Facebook, being Petty Crocker, getting on Instagram, comparing yourself to everybody else's life, and you allow yourself to stay stuck and you're praying for a miracle to take place in your life, but you won't get yourself unstuck. You won't learn how to look at yourself and say, Father, I know that I am going to be first. I know that I feel forgotten, but I'm about to praise my way out of this thing. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Before you know it, all of a sudden you feel like Papa I spinach. Wow! You figure all of a sudden, oh God, I feel my body getting strength. I wanted to give up, but I feel strong. I feel anointed. I'm dripping with oil. What happens when you come out of a season where you've been dropped? These people hurt you. And everything that you're feeling, you're validated to feel it. They hurt you and they left you. But listen, you can't help what happened to you. That pain may not be your fault, but that healing is your responsibility. In this message, I pray over you right now. That things that are hidden on the inside of you that have made you jaded, that have made you hardened, that have made your heart feel some sort of kinky kind of way, like a, I just feel just, ooh, I feel, every time I see this person, I just, kill them! You're just praying for God to kill them. I pray right now that that comes out of you today. I pray right now that anything that is hindering your move of God in your life, that is hindering your favor, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, that ex that walked out with your best friend, you looking and have done all this work and ain't getting that promotion, I come against that spirit right now, that hindering spirit, that spirit right there, Father, that offense spirit, we break it off of you because you are walking into your future, baby. Your future is bright, and it don't matter if nobody else can't see it. You and God got to know that if nobody supports you, if nobody's there for you, that God has put everything you need on the inside of you. Waymaker, miracle worker. Y'all should sit me around my house. I'd scare you. Thank God there ain't no cameras. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. And then I go into falling in love with Jesus. Because all of a sudden my strength, falling in love with Jesus. Oh, devil, you should have taken me out when you could have. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. In his arms, come on, in his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, come on, you feel it. Some dead bones are coming back to life in here. I feel protected. 
protected. <laughs> you better sit down. You better sit down. I've learned in this season. I was raised a preacher's kid. I've learned in this season. I ain't going to walk into church. And make no preacher prophesy. You can stay with me, but that's so you're 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 walking in, in anointing right now. See, you don't know what some people are going through. But nothing produces oil. Those same people that are touching you right now, their hands gonna just slip off of you because you're gonna be so slippery with oil. Let them talk while you get better. He's teaching you, God is teaching you that in this season, he's a God of restitution, honey. He's a God, he don't just restore. You lost it. He's going to give you back better. He's going to give you back double for your trouble. He's going to give you back all those seasons that you allowed yourself to get up when you couldn't even, you didn't even feel there was life in you. You were being hit on every side. And even if you had to crawl, you got back up again. You went and set yourself in that place. And praise your way out. Today I'm talking about who dropped you. Look at your neighbor and say, who dropped you? Who dropped you? Who dropped you? Was it dad? Was it mama? Who dropped you? Who do- I hate when people, you know, I, I hate when people make me look at my neighbor. In fact, I want the seat where nobody's by me because I didn't come to church to talk to her or him. But what happens in the season, you get to where you can't even open your mouth. And the Bible says that life and death are in the power of your words. So a lot of times when you're going through some storms, you ain't got nothing to say. Your tongue feels like a turtle stuck in peanut butter and you can't even open your mouth and say anything. So if you look at your neighbor, they prophesying to you and you prophesying to them. Who dropped you? God has declared the new is your responsibility. He's he's given it to you in this season. God has declared the new and it is your responsibility to walk in it. And God is arranging things in your favor. You thought that he forgot about you. And he was giving you a comeback story. Y'all know those movies where you watch and you're in that movie. And y'all, your your blood's... But you know what's going to happen at the end. No. In this season, you don't know what's about to happen. Because we are walking into a season. We're in 2018, and eight means completion, baby. Eight means that you are coming full force. If you get your spirit right, if you get your heart right, if you get your mind right, if you get yourself out of the way, he's going to blow your mind. Today, I'm going to talk about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. I've said it a million times today because I didn't want to cuss coming out. Because you could probably cuss saying that. Mephibosheth. Like, why would you name your kid Mephibosheth? Like, she had to really think about that. (laughs) Mephibosheth. So all the way here to to, to today, I was going, because y'all know I slaughter names. That is not my my gift. gift. I will call you by your first initial. Or even in my phone, I got how people are in, 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 in my mind so that I know who you are. Mephibosheth. 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 I kept saying like fib, but like a lie. I'm a fib. I'm a fibbasheth. Saul was his grandpa, and Jonathan was his father. And David and Jonathan had a covenant. They said, if one of us dies, we're going to take care of your whole family. Whichever one of us. Anything ever happens. We ha- you ever had that thing with a family member or a friend? Y'all were just like, y'all just like blood brothers and sisters, man. You're like, ride or dies. If anything happens to your family, I'm going to step in and take care. Well, they had this agreement together. And so Saul was so jealous of David. You do realize that when people hate on you, it's because there's something in you that they wish they had. Because haters are confused fans. Haters see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. Because I don't know about you, but honey, out of sight, out of mind, my world is so busy that if you ain't in my face, I ain't thinking about you. I love you, but I'm over here too busy trying to be a boss, all right? And so when people are over here talking about you and you ain't even around and they trying to plot your death and talking about you to people and inboxing people and talking on Facebook statuses about you to people, honey, they are so jealous of you. And instead of being mad and clapping back, wasting your time clapping back, you say, Father, allow me to see what's on the inside of me that they see in me. 
Because obviously there's such an anointing on me that I can't even see. But I know that if I see in that future how bright my future is, then I can walk through this thing. That's what this season needs to be. We don't need to have the clapback anointing. We need to have the arise out of the ashes anointing. That anointing that says, I am the head and not the tail. I am the top and not the bottom. I am going to persevere. I shall live and not die. No weapon formed against me. Father, I cancel every plot, every plan, every scheme, the enemy's device against me or my family member. And Father, it ain't over until you say it's over. Even if I'm walking by myself, I'm a walk. Mm. In 2 Samuel 4 and 4, we read the following story. And I love this story because God brought back to my remembrance Joseph. And the spin that I'm going to put on this today is what if that silent season is for your protection? That season where you were forgotten. They ain't texting you no more. They ain't liking your stuff no more. They ain't on your Facebook lives. They watching you, but they just ain't letting nobody know. They like a little quiet. They the ones that after you make it, they're like, girl, I knew you were going to make it. You're like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You rode with me as long as there was gas in the car. But the minute the gas ran out, where are you at? What if you're like Joseph? See, you can't give up. You can't quit. When you want to give up, you get up. What if like Joseph, he got sold by the people that loved him? His own flesh and blood. Some of you been dropped by flesh and blood. You over here calling yourself the black sheep. And really, the black sheep ain't so bad. It means you had the courage to do something that nobody in your family is. You might have messed up, but at least you, at least you jumped. Joseph had this call of God on his life. And he got sold by his brothers. For like nothing. Like if you're going to sell me, I want you to get some money, okay? Like I want you to be able to go buy you something really big. Because I, 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 he, he got sold for nothing. Because here's what the enemy does. He starts trying to take you out here. When you're a kid. Putting you in special ed. Putting you in a family where it's embarrassing. Putting you in a family where your mama and daddy get divorced. Because he's trying to take you out because he can't touch you. But where he gets you is six inches between your ears. Every time you walk into a room, you feel like all eyes are on you. And all of a sudden, he gets sold. And then he don't just get sold there. This dude was so, he was about chicka wow wow. He was so fine. That's why his brother trying to get him, because he had it all going on. All right, he's all that in a bag of chips. And he gets sold, and then he goes, and he has to move him with Potiphar. And Potiphar's wife's like, you know, I could see her right now. She's like, boy, you bad, and you mine. And he had such character that he was like, you ain't t can't touch this. No, 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 can't touch this. Nah. And so what he did was he ended up standing against that woman, and that woman all of a sudden went to her husband. He tried to touch me. What happens when you get in trouble for something you didn't even do? It's like the devil's trying to take you out. People are saying you did stuff you didn't even do. Then he gets thrown into jail. The dude can't get a break. And he gets thrown into jail. And then all of a sudden the butler and, and the butler and, 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 the, and the baker did something. And they got themselves put in jail too. Because it was all divine. You see what I'm saying? It was all divine appointments because that's how God rolls. Even when you don't understand, he's using exactly where you are to get you where you're supposed to go. Even when you're working at CVS with, a, with five degrees, you can't even get a job because you are, out, you are too smart. And you can't even get a job because it, you're just too qualified. What? Not knowing that God is going to use that CVS job over there to get you in front of an angel. See, if you over here in that place, in that office, with the, with the, we're looking out over downtown with your degree making six figures, you don't need God. But when you get in that place where you need God, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't get a job. So God, I'm going to have to learn right here's where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to plant myself right here and I'm not going to move. I'm going to stop trying to stabilize what you're shaking free, me free from and know that exactly where I'm supposed to be is where I'm supposed to be. And he gets sold and then all of a sudden he's in this jail. He's got this call on him. But ain't nobody seeing him. 
He's watching everybody else get used to God, and he's sitting over here in the jail. His dad thinks he's dead. His brother sold him. Potiphar's wife said he did something he didn't even do. He finds himself in jail, and Pharaoh, the king at that time, said, I had a dream, and I need somebody to interpret it. And he asked the whole world, all, all of his people, and nobody understood. And then all of a sudden, that butler and that baker said, oh, we know somebody. See, your name's going to come back up even when you don't think. When you got a call of God on your life, honey, he going, he going, I promise to God, God never took nothing from me in my life that he didn't fail to slide in with an upgrade, okay? You just got to persevere. The butler and the baker, they said, we know somebody. They go to that jail, and sure enough, David said, he gave, gave, Joseph did everything, told him exactly what was happening. He said, now, all I want you to do is make sure you tell him I'm in here and I shouldn't be here. You ever been there? You always there for that person, taking them chicken noodle soup. But honey, when you need chicken noodle soup, they well, what? They're like, oh, if you need me, let me know. And you're like, I would if I could get my head off this pillow. And so all of a sudden, all these years later, the place he thought where he was forgotten, God took him from that place because he answered a, a dream. Took people back to him, took him from the place of desolate all the way up to be a king. And you know what? This is so cool about him. And some of you need to check your hearts on this one. Because some of y'all, like, if I ever get there, I'm going to be like, boy, bye. You're going to wash my clothes. You're going to carry my purse. You're... His character was so awesome. His character was ready for his purpose. When he could have killed his brothers, he became the king. He could have killed them. You know what he did? He fed them. He didn't remind them of what they did to him. How many of us could do that in that season? So in 2 Samuel... Four and four, we hear of another story just like his. I mean, we can even look at David. Look at David. He was a shepherd boy. All his brothers were out there trying to fight a Goliath, scared to death. Not David. He ain't scared of nothing. He done, he done killed a lion. He done killed a bear. Like in that season, he was preparing. He was worshiping. He was getting his insides ready. And so when all of a sudden he faced that Goliath, see, a lot of you don't understand, but your Goliath is, is a promotion for you. He's going to use your Goliath, that thing in front of you, to promote you all the way to the top. That season where you think God's forgotten about you. That's why you got to get prepared. Because if you ain't preparing for what you're praying for, when the lights come on, see, you thought because the curtain had closed, the production was over, but God had to close that curtain in order to set up for the next scene. He got you in this place, and he's saying, this ain't where you're at, because God, I promise you something. He says in Ephesians 3.20, he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. That means more than you could think, more than you could pray, more than you could fast for. He said, my kids always get the best. In 2 Samuel 4 and 4, we read the following story. Thank you, boo. You just sit there, though, because I think I'm going to want you in a minute. 2 Samuel 4 and 4. Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old, and when the news about Saul and Jonathan came to Jezreel, his nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became crippled. His name was Mephibosheth. When the news came to the nurse that Jonathan and King Saul were overtaken and killed, great fear rose up in her. Fear can be demoralizing and paralyzing in many ways. That's why a lot of times when you get hurt in relationships, all of a sudden you're afraid to let anybody love you again because what if I get hurt? My heart can't hold another rejection. You ever been there? So you end up living in fear, and this is how the enemy gets you because he makes you fear if you get in another relationship. You're hearing in your head everything that ex said about you. That ex said nobody will ever love you. Nobody will ever love you with those kids. Nobody's ever going to be there for you. If you don't do it, ain't nobody going to do it. You are a strong, powerful woman. Ain't no man going to ever put up with you. You're going to need to be cooking and cleaning. And so here you are hearing all of these things that are coming against anything that God says about you. And you're hearing them more than you're hearing what God is saying about you because you ain't your word. You, you want a full-time God on a part-time relationship. You're coming in here on Sunday and only getting what we're preaching and on our Facebook lives. But you don't really know what God is saying about you. And he says you're his special creation. That five-finger forehead that you hate, he over here saying, girl, that's the best five-finger forehead i ever seen in my life. He all those thick thighs. I have saved that cell phone from hitting the toilet many times. I love everything about you. That's how God rolls. That's what he says. 
He says, you're everything to me. And in this season, I need you to understand that this right here is just your tra- I'm giving you, I'll never forget when I went through to Bloomingdale's and I'm telling y'all I lost my $500,000 house. I lost my Mercedes. He, and it, I was up in heaven. And you hate me to God every day. I was telling him every day how much he hated me because he didn't just take my husband away, my good looking thing that I thought I couldn't live without. Look at you making it without that person you thought you could look. Look at you making it. Without that person, you thought you couldn't make it without. When you look back, you understand why you had to go through some things, huh? That thing that you were holding on to that become your idol. All of a sudden, man, look at you. I was just thinking, God, man, just even coming back from Nigeria, sitting up there like a queen, man. I was in a bulletproof Mercedes. I was like, and here I am going to go back to my church and be fumbling to get out of my car. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, I, they're walk, I'm walking to my room and the saxophone players are singing this song to me. And I'm just like, what in the world? Everybody had Real Talk Kim on their shirts. I'm like, nah, I could get used to this. <laughs> what? How did I get here? You know how you get in there? You can't come to a church like this. God ain't a psych kind of God. He don't put people in your path with God blessing their life and just does this. Oh, they're going to have it, but you ain't. If he brings you and you align yourself to people that are going where you want to go, this is why you got you to protect your anointing. I'm telling you, you can look at your five closest friends, and it's a prophetic word of where your life is going. You want people around you that's going where you want to go. You want people around you that when you start to fall, they're like, girl, you better get up. Oh, you're angry right now. I'm going to need you to get your spirit right. Oh, you're not. Oh, 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 this is just a season, baby. You better learn. I need people around me that are going to push me to break through and not break downs. And I look there and I think, my God, I was like Mephibosheth. I was like Joseph. I was like David. You're in some seasons right now where you feel forgotten, but God has not forgotten about you. He's just preparing you for what you're praying for. When the news came that the nurse, that Jonathan and King Saul were overtaken and killed, fear rose up in her. Fear can be demoralizing and paralyzing in many ways in her heart. This nurse no doubt wondered if they killed the king and his son, would they come looking for his heirs? See, back in those days, back in those days, when one died, when the king got killed and Jonathan got killed, brothers, the brothers got killed and Mephibosheth was Jonathan's son. The key, the key was when my father and my mother handed down this church to us in the old days, whenever they handed the church down, that, that they would kill everybody in their family. All the legacy was gone because they never wanted anyone trying to rise up and take it. So this woman had fear, and that's some of you in this room today. You're doing more than your family has ever done before. You are a game changer. You are very unstable. You are scared of where you're going, but you know that you are the one that's breaking generational curses off of your family. You are, listen, generational curses are real, but generational blessings are realer. And when you accept Jesus in your heart, all oh, old things have passed away, and he's made things new in your life, and you got the strength to lay hands and break that mess off of your kids some of you walking around I'm telling y'all something I said in 2018 I ain't answering my phone for some people because I've been telling you forever to do something you ain't done it yet I ain't got time until you're ready to help help God help you honey you ain't going nowhere I need pe- I am running man I, there's millions of people in this world that need life givers they need they want it they're craving it and we will come to church every week and still stay stuck going to a psychic and wishing upon a star when you can pray to the one that's created the stars over here praying looking at the astrology in the newspaper people are crazy did you know there's billions of people looking at the astrology in the newspaper and it's all the same and we will settle for that instead of believing down deep and getting to know father's voice for holy spirit what are you saying to me today I don't want to get out of bed today. I don't want to go work at Bloomingdale's in the well, taking out panties and lipsticks. And I don't want to get, I don't, I want to be at the king's table right now. And he's saying, in my timing. See, we got to trust God's timing, okay? We, we got to realize that he, I promise to God, if you're in this room, I'm here to prophesy to you today that you ain't seen nothing yet. You may feel like you, God, is on vacation. He ain't talking to you. He ain't speaking to you. But I can promise you one thing. If you're in this building today, this is not the way your story is going to end. And you are going to walk into a season, honey, where it is no struggle. You are going to walk in a season where your purpose has become your platform. 
But you got to get well. We uncover ourselves too quick. That's why we keep marrying over and over and over again. We keep running men off with our big mouths. Because we never get well. And we go through life making people pay for what other people did. And we walk around not trusting nobody. And we got this little bitty wall built up around us. And we say, if I don't let nobody in, they can't hurt my heart. But the problem is you're keeping out your blessings too. Instead of realizing that your heart is that one place on the inside of you that heals. And with every time you fall and every time your heart gets broken, you get a little bit more anointing because you hit rock bottom again. And at that rock bottom is where you find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. And you learn how to fall in love with Jesus. You learn how to begin to praise your way out. It gets stronger and you get stronger stronger and you get stronger and you get stronger and all of a sudden you go from that caterpillar into that beautiful butterfly and all of a sudden the things that you hated you're like thank you God that you trusted me with this thank you you trusted me with this heartbreak thank you you trusted me with that rejection because now I know what it feels like and I have empathy for other people (laughs) baby I'm gonna tell you something you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't go to a church where that pre- pastor ain't got a lip. <laughs> I need you to go, I need you to have a lip. I need to know that you made it through something. I need to know that you have prospered. I need to know that you know how to pray your way. You better get around some people with a lip. They ain't there no more, but buddy, they can help you get through because they ain't nothing like somebody that's gone through hell because you come out on fire. Something about hell. When you walk through something in your life, It takes your pride away. People talking about you and you can't stop it. People Googling you. People lying on you. Man, ain't nothing like. You're going to get free from people in that season. You hear me? You either going to get pitiful or you're going to get powerful. You're either going to get bitter or you're going to get better. And it's all your choice. God ain't going to do it for you. You got to be in that season saying, I don't know why I'm here, but this is my free life college. And I ain't got to pay one student loan back. I'm about to come out of this thing. What? That had to be what Mephibosheth. I know he fell alone. He's in this little dark room. And he's, he's, he's living with a woman that is fearful that was out of her fear, she dropped him. And that's some of you in this room today. You've been raised by moms that are fearful. You've been raised by moms that are, are always sick. You've been raised by fathers that weren't in your life. They walked out on you, and now you can't even trust the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because your, your natural father walked out on you. And now you're over here saying, I probably will never be able to be a father. I'll never be a good husband because I don't have example. When you've got Jesus as your example. Rejection is not necessarily someone wanting out of your life, but sometimes it's somebody God needs out of your future. And sometimes that goes as as dads. God is saying, I just need to get you here because where I'm taking you, nobody in your family. This is why adoption, people that are like, I just feel unwanted. Nobody ever wanted me. Man, do you realize that God thought you were so special that he allowed you to be adopted into people that actually chose you? I didn't get chose. I didn't get to choose you got to realize that right where you are is a setup for something amazing in your life. He trusted you. You know how cool that is? The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That means you're going to go through some things, baby. I'm sorry. You're like, I just feel this is so unfair. My life is so unfair. You're looking at the neighbor that is a reprobate, a neighbor that is a player. They're ever, they got the boat. They got the BMWs. They've got the great jobs. They've got the cool clothes. They're snatched. They, they have children and just bounce right back. And you're over here still trying to get your back boobs off, back boobs off from your little Jesse that's 20 years old. It's like you look at some people and they just got it going on. And now you're comparing yourself and you're stuck not knowing that, man, my story is going to be a bestseller. Everybody's got a story, but mine's going to be a bestseller because God trusted me with a storm. He's trusting you with the season of silence. He's trusting you with the season of silence. She picked Mephibosheth up and fled for their lives. And like most little five-year-olds, his little legs couldn't keep up and he fell. He fell and he went lame. Perhaps there is some situation in your life that makes you feel crippled at this moment. Or maybe someone, a friend, a coworker, or family member is holding you back or hindering your ability to move forward. 
You may even be surrounded by people who have fallen prey to drugs, alcohol, and other addictions, and it's threatening to pull you down too. You keep going and letting these people, and you're, they're enabling you in your dysfunction. And just thinking God's going to take it away from you instead of saying, even if I got to sit all by myself, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender all to you, every friend, even if I got to be by myself. Everything I give you. Y'all better learn how to open your mouth and say something, honey. You can, and say, say prophetic things. You're like, I don't say it. It's hard to prophesy when you don't see it. I, I got to go back to work, make $9 an hour, drive a whole hour to Linux, sit in that traffic. We complain about everything and wonder why we ain't got no money. Because a critical spirit brings forth poverty. You better thank God you got a job. You better thank God I got a job. I, I'm tired of eating romaine noodles. I remember when I was going through my divorce and I had to eat romaine noodles. Every day I was like, I hate these rom. I lost everything. And God said, you better learn how to prophesy. I'll never forget. I went and got me some hot dogs, some Tony Sashley, put it in my, my, my romaine noodles. And I said, boys, come eat. We got some pompadours. You better thank God you got bread, baby. You better thank God you're going to have something to talk about. <laughs> you can probably name many ways that people, y'all, I always do. Even, even like I fall down a step. I'm clumsy as I'll get out, all right? And I fall down a step. I'm like, whoa, I got down there fast. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, I've learned. I ain't letting nothing come out of my mouth. And I ain't letting nobody hang around me. There's negative Nellies, petty crockers. Ah, not in this season. I love you, but from over there. Bye, Felicia. I love you. I mean it. Like, I love everybody. Like, I ain't even mad at people that are mean to me. I'm like, I would be mad too if you weren't my world. Because <laughs> I'm a good friend. Girl, I'm a good friend. I would be mad too. Go on and talk. I'm going to pray for you. Cause I'd, be, I'd be bitter, Betty, too. Because, man, if I lost a good friend, what? Friends are hard. Loyal friends are hard to find. You better hold on to them. You better be careful how you treat people because one day you may need to work for them. I say hustle so hard your haters ask if, they, if you hire them. They're going to they come back around because God said he put you in, in he put right here. He's going he to bring them enemies right here. He's going to let you see. But the beautiful thing about healing is you don't even care if they're sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Like when I bought my first book, all those people that talked about me, I, me and my mama were looking and all these pre-sales were coming in. I did $30,000 on my first book and I was special ed. Like if you watch my Facebook statuses, you don't even know what I'm trying to say because I don't put no punctuations. And yet I wrote a book and it went bestseller. And I'm looking and mama goes, look at all them haters. They all buying your book, girl. I said, yeah, probably to see if they in it. But they funded my ministry. Won't it do it? You better keep your heart right, baby. You better keep your heart right. That's why the Bible says to guard your heart because out of it flows the issue. You better get your heart right. You better keep your heart right. You better not open your mouth about people. I'm telling you, don't you touch nobody. They all anointed. The Bible says you better touch not that anointed. Well, I don't think they anointed. You better hush. You don't know. They might be Benny Hinn in a week. I'm just saying. God moves fast. When he sees you're ready, he moves you from the back of the line to the front of the line, honey. When he sees you ready, he's like... Uh huh. You can probably name many ways that people fall, but has it caused your walk with the Lord to become crippled? Church hurt. I don't go to church because of hypocrites. Not going to church because of hypocrites. It's like not going to the gym because people are fat. You better get your tail binded with some people because you're going to need us when your daddy dies or your mama dies. You hear what I'm saying? You, oh, ain't nothing like church family. When you get a good church family, uh-huh, that don't gossip and ain't got no cliques, we got a few in this church, but they getting busted wide open. You hear me? You can't go to this church and be broke. You can't go to this church and be a gossip. Ah! God will move you out so fast. We're going through a season of fumigation right now. <laughs> fumigate! Fumigate! I love you, but this place is going somewhere. 
You're going to walk up in here. You ain't going to need Theodore as a counselor anymore. You've been going to the same counselor for 10 years, telling him about your daddy molesting you. Uh Uh-uh, up in here, you're going to get set free immediately. We got to be on guard. Doggone. Yeah, God. I'm feeling this thing in my feet. You hear me? I love you enough, baby. I'm going to tell you the truth. Thieves don't rob empty vaults, baby. Enemy is messing with you because you're strong, not weak. He knows what's in you. You hear me? You're going to go to this church. You go, oh, 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 we're walking in a season, baby. You're about to be favored. Your marriages are about to be healed. Yo, Boaz and Ruth are about to show up. You ain't going to be paying month to month. Uh Uh-uh, not in this church. Me and Mark don't. You shouldn't have to. You hear me? You come in this church and do what God tells you to do, and you watch. You're going to have the same blessings. The same blessings. You better tithe your 10%. That's 10 cent on a dollar. Because that's when the windows of heaven opens over your life. <laughs> Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going I'm to get myself ready. Well, you can't, even buy, you can't even buy a piece of cheese with your credit right now. But you know what God does? He don't just do things halfway. He comes back and gives you a credit score of 800, and you don't even know why it happened. You've just been praising your way through, paying your tithe, answering those 1-800 numbers. Oh, you, you, y- y'all better answer them 1-800 number calls. Every time you get one, you're like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, it's a creditor. You owe it. Y'all come up here every Sunday, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, he's going to give me dead consolidation, my God. And you ain't even paying your tithe or answering your 800 number calls. <laughs> they can't steal your birthday, boo. And God can't put you on the, on the list to be debt consolidated if you're on the naughty list. Uh, you're on the naughty list right now because you're running from them. I was too. That's why I'm talking about it. I, I remember every time that creditor would call, I'd be like, ah! and I heard one day he said, ma'am, do you know you owe? I said, yeah. God said, answer that call. I said, I answer that call. He said, answer that call. I just went through a divorce, had no dignity, nothing. He said, answer that call. I answered that call. He said, ma'am, do you know you owe? Blah, 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 blah. I said, yes. He said, when are you going to pay it? When you give me a loan to pay it? Because I want you to quit calling me. <laughs> he said, ma'am, what can you pay? I said, $5 a month. He said, perfect. Within three months, I got a bill that said debt consolidated $24,000, and I never, my daddy said, no, that ain't for real. It was for real. That's how God rolls. You got to help God help you, baby. You can probably name many ways that people fall, but has it caused your walk with the Lord to become crippled? Has it caused you to feel inadequate or not worthy of fulfilling the call of plan of God on your life? Has the fall of others caused you distressed or even depression? The Lord does not want us to be crippled by the fall of others or by a personal fall even in our own life. God has spiritual amnesia. You know that? You could have been nay nay last night. And you walk up in this place with a hangover. Feels like an induced flu. And you get up here, way make miracle work. And you mean it. You're like, I want to quit doing this. All of a sudden, he like, what, what you over here apologizing for? Way make, I got spiritual amnesia. I just need you to get up and start moving your legs in the right direction. You might fall, but get back up again, honey. <laughs> Don't let others' misfortune, lifestyles, changes, addiction, betrayal, and problems cause you to become crippled or even to fall yourself. In 2 Samuel 4 and 4, we see how much Mephibosheth had fallen. In 2 Samuel 9 and 1, we learn David inquiries if there is still anyone left alive from the house of Saul to show kindness in Jonathan's honor. David remembered the covenant that Jonathan made with him in 1 Samuel 18, 1 and 4. Although his father, the king, had issues with David, Jonathan's soul was knit to David. So David wanted to be faithful to what covenant because of the love for Jonathan. The story continues, and Ziba, who was a servant of the house of Saul, tells King David of Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. This is a season where God's going to bring some Zebas in your life. You know who Ziba is? Ziba is who brings and remembers you in the jail and says, oh, I got somebody. See, you thought you were forgotten, but God's going to bring some Zebas in your life to get you to that promotion that you need to be at. 
He was a servant of the house of Saul, tells King David of Jonathan's son Mephibosheth. David sends for the Mephibosheth and restores to him the land of his grandfather, King Saul. What? He restored. In that season that you're in right now, what if? See, if he would not have been crippled, if that nurse in her fear wouldn't have dropped Mephibosheth, guess what? He would have had his two legs, his two hands, and his mouth. And he would have been trying to kill David too. But God said, I got purpose for you, Mephibosheth. So what looks like it's going to be a finale for you is just a setup. I'm just, just a pit stop for you. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up finding you because David, a a man of character, David is going to see you and he's going to restore every single, you're going to sit at his table. And when you sit with the king, everything is restored to you. And what he thought was a finale was just a setup. That break, that brokenness, that separation, that rejection. Was just God preserving you for where he's about to take you. He's about to uncover you. As you live each day at home, at school, at work, at church, wherever you are, you will find yourself in situations where you are asked to comment, to speak, to use your words, Often the vitality of the situation can ignite or dissipate merely on the words you utter. Think of it this way. That situation is like a little fire. Not big, not out of control, not destructive yet. And you have a bucket in each hand. In one bucket is water and in the other hand is gasoline. At that point, you are given a choice. You can pour the bucket of water on the fire and put it out, or you can pour the bucket of gasoline on the fire and see it spread out of control. It's your choice. In every situation, you can utter words that bring dignity or words that demoralize, words that show acceptance or words that communicate rejection. Words that restore a person to wholeness or destroy them to pieces. Words that are kind or words that hurt. David chose to utter words that built up rather than tear down Mephibosheth. We carry around both buckets every day in every situation. From which bucket do you draw your words? One last thought. What David did for Mephibosheth, God does for us. Just as a king brought the outcast into the palace and made him a son, God adopts us into his family. You and I are Mephibosheths too. The similarities between his life and ours are astounding. Before we came into a relationship with the father, we spent our lives distancing ourselves from him because of our brokenness and shame. We feared that entering his presence would bring judgment upon our heads When finally we lay trembling at his feet, he touched us and said, don't be afraid. He lifted us up and said, I'm going to give you back everything you ever lost because of sin. I'm going to give you an inheritance, a blessing, and riches in heavenly places. But more than that, I want you forever in my presence, eating at my table, and I'm going to call you my own. That's how awesome he is today. He says, I call you my own. I'm so proud of you. Don't allow the little foxes to spoil the vine. Close them doors and throw away the key. You're over here praying for breakthrough and you won't even get your hand off the doorknob. Over here praying for love and you're over here comparing everybody else's life on social media and all they're showing you is a highlight reel you're making it through because God is raising up people in this season they ain't nobody looking for he's raising up people that he can trust he's saying I trust you you thought you were forgotten You thought nobody knew your name. 
But honey, he's about to turn the light on you and give you a surprise party. He's about to take somebody that lives in little old Sonoya and that no, no, just walking dead they ain't going to come out of there. You're going to come out of there and you're going to be the star and the apple of God's eye. There is no coincidence that we live in the city where pine woods and all of these next Hollywood is because God is raising up some kings and queens in Fayetteville, Georgia that are going to rule and reign all because God said, I trust you. I trust you. I'm so thankful I put myself in time out after my divorce because I probably drove my ex to drink because of my big old mouth because I was broken. And I'm so thankful because that man right there would have never looked at me if I would not have put a do not disturb up on my heart and allow God to heal me. And now I look at the fulfillment of everything in my life. It happened within three years. I was Bloomingdale's working full time. I've written three books and they've all gone bestseller. I'm writing another one. I just signed with Charisma. I'm writing another one right now that's published. What am I saying? Don't uncover yourself too soon. You're in preparation mode, baby. You got me and Pastor Mark and my mom and father and other leaders in this house and we're covering you and we're holding you and we're praying for you and we're not going to let you fall. Don't uncover yourself because you're ready to be seen. Because when God comes on the scene, ain't nobody can take away what God's put. Ain't nobody, when you are qualified for something, you ain't got to sleep with nobody. You ain't got to lose your dignity for nobody. When God has a call on your life, it don't matter if nobody thinks you deserve it. He loves to show out on your behalf. You can stand up on your feet. Way make miracle work. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're prophesying. I dare you to begin to open your mouth. There's some of you that feel like you can't even open your mouth. Life has beat the tar out of you. You even come into church said, God, I need something. I need an answer. I need it. I need Pastor Kim to say something that is going to shake me out of this place. I feel stuck. I hear the Lord saying right now, you are not stuck unless you want to be. You are not stuck because you are a king's kid. And if you begin to open your mouth, he's going to be, I just see in the spirit, some people being like this. You've been in the spirit just, you can't even hardly, you just got so much weight on you. You're so tired. And it's from things that don't even matter. That fear. If you're in this place today and you say, Kim, I've been operating in that fear. I've been, I've been afraid. I've been letting the enemy lie to me. I've been over here thinking that my life is over because some of the mistakes I made. But I want to right now put a declaration in that, Father, I am yours and you are mine and you are a way maker. If you're in this place and you just say, I'm just going to open the altars. And you say, I just need that connection. I I just need to walk up there. Because here's what happened. One ounce of obedience does more for you than all the prayer in the world. And when you begin to uncover what you've been hiding, all of a sudden those chains start breaking off of your life. And if you say, Kim, I believe everything you said today. I've been feeling forgotten. I've been angry. I've been stuck. But I am getting up and I'm walking out of it. I just want to open the altars right now. I am making a declaration that I am moving from the back of the line to the front of the line. I am. You see me, devil. I'm going to tell y'all something. Tell y'all something. Listen, I'm telling you. You don't, some of y'all don't even know why you're walking up here, but just your obedience to do so. God told me today, he said, I want you to open that altar because we don't open this altar anymore. And right here is where surrender takes place. Right here is where you get out of your way. Right here is where you get your flesh out of the way and begin to allow God to put you back together again. I'm telling y'all, some of y'all been praying for your Boaz, but won't let go of Bozo. You've been praying for your Ruth, but won't let go of Delilah. I'm telling you, we're walking in a season where restitution is coming on the scene. You watch what God's about to do in three months in your life. It ain't even going. He's he doing it in the beginning of the year. Y'all hear me? He ain't waiting to the end of the year. Ah, your pastor is proof that he's doing it in the beginning of the year. You ain't got to wait till October. 